What's going on, guys? This is James Allen. Today is Saturday, March 2nd, 2024. What an episode we have ahead of us today. We have a spectacular episode. We're going to compare Ethereum to Internet Computer to pioneering technology. Uh, Ethereum pioneered their smart contract. Prior to Ethereum, uh, the Bitcoin chain, uh, there was no such thing as smart contract. Um, Bitcoin was just a distributed ledger system. It couldn't host code, and Ethereum pioneered a smart contract, and a smart contract is a code that lives on a blockchain. Again, I'm going to say this one more time. Smart contract is a piece of code that lives on a blockchain, and it was pioneered by Ethereum. In terms of ICP, they pioneered many things. Uh, chain key cryptography is one of them. This is why uh, Internet Computer has such a time to finality. Uh, thanks to their consensus system, which uses chain key cryptography, that's pioneering stuff. Of course, Internet Computer pioneered the smart contract that can handle HTTPS, again, another pioneering um, uh, feature from Internet Computer, which allows them to host dApps fully on chain. First protocol to allow dApps to be fully on chain. That's pretty pioneering stuff. And we're going to get into um, uh, this particular one later, the reverse gas model of Internet Computer. But that's another pioneering feature from ICP. So we have two pioneering technologies that is going against each other. So spectacular episode ahead of us. Um, I do want to say that Vitalik and uh, Dominique William speak well of each other. So I don't want to paint a picture that these guys are enemies. They speak well of each other. So it's important that I say that uh, Vitalik called uh, uh, ICP the Ethereum killer. And uh, uh, Dominique William, he created CKETH, which is a, which is a system that basically allows ICP to interact with Ethereum at a protocol level without bridges. So clearly, um, uh, these two founders speak well of each other, think well of each other, and they want to work with each other in a multi-chain future. So I just want to get this out the way so that no one thinks uh, that I'm painting these two guys as enemies. They speak well of each other and they respect each other. However... There are two protocols that's going to compete for market share in a blockchain world. So at the end of the day, even though they're friends, they're going to compete for market share in a blockchain world. So um, let's compare them. Uh, let's have some fun. I do have some notes. So a lot of notes, and I'm going to use it as reference because I'm not a machine. I can't remember everything, but let's start. And the first thing we're going to start with is the founder, um, the founder of Ethereum, Vitalik Buterin. He strikes me as a genius. I'm not going to lie to you. When I see him, this is my impression of him because I don't know him. Uh, whenever I see him and, you know, read his work, the guy's a genius. To me, I, at least, I think he's a flat-out genius. So I think Vitalik strike me as a smarter one out of the two. However, when, when I look at Dominique, Dominique looks more balanced. Uh, of course, both these gentlemen are very smart. You know, I'm pretty sure they're both smarter than me, right? So... I'm pretty sure these guys are incredibly smart, but I would say Vitalik is the smarter one and Dominique is the more balanced one. Another thing I, I, I like about Dominique is his um, uh, presentation. I think he's the only crypto founder I've seen so far that takes his presentation seriously. And when I look at his hair, he has gray hair, which to me is a huge plus. That means he's an older guy. And I think older men have an edge over younger men. I'm speaking from experience. Uh, in my 20s, I was a complete disaster. I was a knucklehead in my 20s. Couldn't keep a job. Was just doing bad things, man. So I just think older men, uh, they're more mature. They're more seasoned. They're more experienced. And I just think it's an edge. So I will give it to Dominique William as uh, the founder. I, I, think, I think Dominique has an edge over Vitalik. He just seems more experienced. He commands more authority. I like his pre presentation more. So uh, this round is going to go to Internet Computer because I think Dominique William is the better founder. Now, the next uh, point we're going to analyze is market cap. And that one is pretty obvious. That one is less subjective, right? Because uh, the previous one founder, that's just my impression. Uh, market cap is more uh, objective, right? You could just look at Coinbase and see that the market cap of Ethereum is $400 billion, right? While the market cap of Internet Computer is just $6 billion. So Ethereum crushes uh, Internet Computer in that domain. So this checkpoint goes to Ethereum for sure. And market cap do stands for something. It, it stands for staying power. It stands for momentum. It stands for vested interest. 
and that creates inertia in of itself. So something with a large market cap like that is not just going to go away, you know. So market cap represents staying power, and I think Ethereum wins that by far. So Ethereum gets the market cap checkpoint. Let's see what's next here. Staking rewards. And I've looked at the Ethereum staking rewards, and it ranges anywhere from 4 to 6% staking rewards, which is pretty good if you ask me. When you look at the banks, uh, the average CD is giving you like 1%. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Even money markets, um, even money markets are not better. So the bank is not really paying you anything these days. So 4 to 6% from Ethereum is pretty good. However, when you look at the average staking reward for ICP, you get 8% which is pretty goddamn good. It's almost double what Ethereum gives you. In fact, this morning, I looked at my neuron. I looked up my neuron number and see how much I was getting. I'm getting, I'm getting right now 15.7% reward, staking rewards from internet computer. And I did a video on how to get staking rewards from that protocol. So yeah, I think internet computer wins by far in terms of return on investment. Your staking yield is far more better. Now, some people could argue that Ethereum represents... Uh, uh, more profit because even though Ethereum pays you a less percentage in Ethers, four to four to six percent, uh, Ethereum prices will go up more than internet computer. But that's subjective, and no one knows the future. We just have to go by the raw numbers. And since Ethereum is giving four to six percent, and ICP is giving an average of eight percent, and I'm getting fifteen point seven percent, staking reward goes to ICP for sure. The next item we have on a list is node validator costs. And this is important for people like me who are developers and are interested in becoming a node validator. In terms of Ethereum, the hardware requirement for a node machine, whether it's a validator or a block producer, is not too crazy. It's affordable. You could get an Ethereum machine uh, without breaking your wallet. However, when you look at this, when you look up the staking requirement you have to put up to become a validator on Ethereum, it's asking for 32 ETH, 32 ETH. That's about $100,000, guys, $100,000. Now, when you look at internet computer, the hardware requirements are pretty brutal. I've went over this. I've showed you guys the uh, specs required to put up a node machine, and I got a quote, and a quote that I got was $10,000 per machine. So if you're going to become a node operator for internet computer, you're going to spend a lot of money uh, for the hardware. So each machine, you're going to spend anywhere from ten to $15,000 on each machine. Uh, so while the hardware cost is not as expensive on Ethereum, Ethereum is asking you to put $100,000 in staking requirement as opposed to internet computer. Uh, their staking requirement is pretty much null. They're just asking for 11 ICP tokens, but the hardware cost you have to put up is enormous. So ten to 15000 I did a run up to see how much uh, it will take me to put up four nodes on internet computer. It turns out to be $75,000 to get everything installed and put it at a tier three data center. And Ethereum, uh, the staking requirement is $100,000. So while ICP is cheaper uh, to put up uh, nodes on the internet computer, I do think Ethereum probably have better documentation and more developer support to become a node operator. So even though ICP is cheaper than Ethereum, because I think Ethereum has more developer support, I will make this one a tie. Uh, just on a side note, if anyone is interested in becoming an investor and sponsoring me with $75,000 so I could put up those four nodes and make a node operator tutorial so that the ICP community is more friendly, more developer friendly. Hit me up on James Allen Zero on my Instagram. Anyway, node operator cost, that's a tie. In terms of programming languages, I have written both Solidity and Motoko, which is the programming language for internet computer. They're both pretty easy. They're both pretty easy to pick up. I didn't have any struggle with either of them. Unlike Cardano's Haskell Plutus, which I found very difficult, very scientific. I didn't like that language at all. I think... Um, uh, Ethereum's language, Solidity, and um, uh, ICP's language, Motoko, they're both pretty easy to pick up as a developer. And both platforms support Rust, so I think they're pretty much tied on that one. However, I do want to say that internet computer smart contracts are far more powerful and far more advanced than Ethereum smart contract. Internet computer smart contracts are more like containers as opposed to Ethereum smart contracts. They're just code, right? Internet computer smart contracts have their own ID, their own unique ID their own wallet, they have their own state, and of course, there's the code, right? So I think internet computer smart contracts is far more advanced, so in the developer department, I will give it to internet computer. Now, in terms of the ecosystem, the ecosystem is basically the developer community around each protocol, and 
The metric I'm using for that is GitHub repository. If you do a quick lookup and search for um, uh, GitHub commit by uh, crypto, by blockchain, you're gonna see in the last 12 months, internet computer has had, the, has had the most GitHub repositories. Internet computer, in terms of developer activity, is number one in the past year. In fact, for me to find Ethereum, I had to scroll all the way down to number 25 to see Ethereum. So while internet computer is number one, Ethereum is number 25 in developer activity in the last 12 months. What does this tell you? It tells you that developers are abandoning Ethereum. <laughs> I'm going to say that one more time. Developers are abandoning Ethereum. And I think I know the reason why. We'll get to that later. However, when you look at the developer activity overall, not just in the last 12 months, you see a different picture. You see that Ethereum is number one in terms of developer activity overall. And that's probably because Ethereum was out first. And, you know, it's the first uh, blockchain to hold smart contracts. So, of course, because of the first mover's advantage, Ethereum is number one in terms of developer activity overall, followed by ICP. ICP is a close number two, especially considering the fact that ICP has only been out since May 2021. Uh, it's quickly cashing up the Ethereum, followed by Cardano, a protocol that I used to like before finding in internet computer. So, um, Ethereum is number one for overall developer activity. Uh, ICP is number two and Cardano is number three. So in terms of ecosystem, whew, that's, a, that's a tough one. Um, so in the last 12 months, ICP is number one. Overall, Ethereum is number one. I think it's a tie in terms of ecosystem. It's a tie, but I'm not so sure on that one. Share your thoughts in the comment section in regards to this metric. What is your thoughts? Okay, now we're done looking at the external factors, the founder, the staking rewards, the ecosystem, the node operators. Those are the external factors. Now let's look at the protocol itself, the metrics of the protocol itself. And spoiler, Ethereum is about to get killed. <laughs> All right, we're going to start with network capacity, how many transactions per second uh, the blockchain can handle. So Ethereum can handle about 20 to 30 transactions per second. Yes, the Ethereum mainnet can handle about 20 to 30 transactions per second. Now, Ethereum does have plan on, on, on coming out with Ethereum 2, which could handle 20 to 100,000. I know Ethereum has plan on fixing that, but we're talking about the present. The Ethereum mainnet can only handle 20 to 30 transactions per second. Not really good. Uh, in terms of ICP, it can handle 11,500 transactions per second. So ICP crushes Ethereum in terms of network capacity. The next metrics is uh, time to finality. Time to finality is basically how long does the data take to become immutable on a blockchain? How long does data take to become irreversible on a blockchain? Time to finality is a metric that's super important because it's unique only to blockchain databases. So it's important we look at that. And when a data gets submitted to the Ethereum network, the time to finality, basically how long it takes to become irreversible, is about 13 minutes. So it takes 13 minutes for data to become finalized on Ethereum and become immutable. For internet computer, that time is one second. So again, internet computer crushes Ethereum. One second time to finality, a very important metric for blockchain databases because one of the key features you care about when you put data on a blockchain is making sure that data stays immutable. It takes 13 minutes for data become, to become immutable on Ethereum and one second on ICP. I think the numbers speak for itself. ICP crushes Ethereum again. Storage costs, and this is very telling. Storage costs, how much does it take how much does it cost you to put data on each blockchain? For internet computer, one gigabyte costs about $5 per year. To, to store one gig on internet computer, it costs about $5 per year. You could quickly find that metric on internet computer's website. It's actually like right at their front page. If you click on the developer section, you're going to see one gig costs $5 per year to store data on the internet computer blockchain. For Ethereum, if you're trying to store one gigabyte, it's going to cost you $5 million. Per year yes you, you heard me correctly <laughs> five million dollars to store one gig on ethereum five million dollars and you're probably thinking james you're full of shit no there's plenty of articles who's done rigorous math rigorous proof and that's been double double checked and their estimate were about 4.6 million dollars to store one gig on ethereum which is absolutely inefficient and a waste of time. So again, internet computer just kills um, uh, Ethereum 
It might just well be the Ethereum killer. The last metric is probably the most important for me. It's network fees. How much does it cost the end user to use Ethereum? And I have extensive experience with both. I've done transactions on ICP. I've done transactions on Ethereum. And I've tried to look for an average online and I couldn't find one. Uh, I found a bunch of different numbers, but I could speak from my personal experience. Um, from making transactions on Ethereum, it's never cost me less than $30. It's usually $30, $40 to do a transaction on Ethereum. The network fees are enormous on Ethereum. And me having a humble background, growing up in Haiti, being from the hood, this is a lot of money to me, man. You know, I'm from working class family. My brother's a truck driver. Like, listen, I don't got $30 to blow like that on Ethereum network fees. And I have seen uh, transaction fees as high as $600 on Ethereum. It could get really costly when you're doing bridging transaction, which you have to do because Ethereum has all these side chains because their main net is so clogged because they could only do 30 transactions per second, right? So like you have to use these side chains, but when you're bringing it back to the Ethereum network, the network fees are enormous from a side chain back to layer one. However, I think there is a testimonial on a cryptocurrency channel on Reddit I want to read to you because it says it all. So let me read to you this testimonial from the cryptocurrency channel on Reddit. It reads, I was surprised to discover just how expensive Ethereum transaction fees can be. Recently, I attempted to send a payment of 460 USDT via the Ethereum network. However, I was shocked to find that the network fees alone amounted to a whooping to a whopping 46.23 US dollars. This got me wondering, is this really what the future of finance looks like? Says it all. Is this really what the future of finance look like? $47 to send some money in terms of network fees. In fact, there's another article uh, that shows a, a visual of a user using Ethereum and a user using internet computer. And the user using Ethereum is just blown away by the transaction fees while the user using internet computer has no transaction fees thanks to the reverse gas model, which is a feature on internet computer that only internet computer does. Reverse gas model basically allows the developer, the, the company, to subsidize the user so that the user can use the DAP without paying any transaction fee. Again, a pioneering feature from internet computer. So how much does a transaction cost on internet computer? Well, I could show you fractions, it's just fractions of a penny. Every time I do a transaction on internet computer, I always see like 0 0.000001 transaction fee. So in terms of network fees, uh, it's pennies on the internet computer, but with the reverse gas model, end users don't even have to pay anything on the internet computer. The company could subsidize that for the end user. And for myself, an app developer, I'm building the Cityscape app, as you know, I don't want my users to pay any transaction fees. So of course I'm gonna use ICP's reverse gas model. So in terms of the network transaction fees, the network fees, ICP wins that by far. And this is why I abandoned Ethereum <laughs> and jump ship first to Cardano, now to internet computer. And I think I'm here to stay on internet computer. So what's my final word? My final word is this. I know Ethereum is trying to reinvent itself as like a settlement layer while the side chain, it's many side chains or the transaction layer. Ethereum has like so many side chains, right? Uh, I think it has uh, Arbitrum, it has Polygon, it has Optimism. That's because the main neck is so clogged and slow. It has to use these layer two side chains, but it's trying to reinvent itself as a settlement layer while the side chains or the transaction layer. All this complication to me just makes the ecosystem unattractive. The network fees are too high and the storage cost for data is way too high. So in my opinion, Ethereum is old technology and ICP is indeed the Ethereum killer. So I will give this to internet computer by far, but share your thoughts in the comment section. Share your thoughts because this is a two-way street. I would love to know. Let me know something that I have missed on both sides and share your thoughts of what you thought of this review regarding internet computer versus ICP, which I give it the ICP by far as a slam dunk. In any case, my misfits, that's all I have for you in this episode. Be sure to press that like button and support me on Patreon. I will see you next time.